Hi everyone, welcome to the tutorial on multiple constraints. Here you're going to learn how to constrain multiple objects together to create all kinds of neat physics gadgets. Let's start off with some simple examples. With linear constraint structure, you're essentially constraining all the objects and targeting them one to the other in a linear fashion. In this example, the red constraint will be the head of my train, and the others will follow. Therefore, I'm going to assign the red prop a kinematic state so it can be manipulated, while all the others will be given a dynamic physics state. Next what I'll do is start off by opening the constraints option for my cylinder here, and assigning it a rope constraint. I'm then going to set its target to the cube. Pretty straightforward, so let's do it again. This time selecting a cube, and targeting the sphere. Lastly, I'll do the same thing with my sphere and target the red cone. Once that's done, I can go in right away and use the Motion Puppet Editor on my cone to drag it along. You'll notice that via my constraint targeting, I have created a sort of linear hierarchy for all the props. Okay, what I want to do in this section is set multiple targets to a single prop. I'll keep the setup I had for my last example, but this time I'm going to select new targets and direct them to my red cone. To do this, I just need to select pick target again with my constrained prop selected and then select my cone. Once that's done, I'll once again puppet my cone to show the results. As you may have expected, now the hierarchy is gone, and all the props are following the single cone. So what if I constrain a single object and have it targeting multiple props? Well, let's find out. First, I need to reverse the physics properties here, and change the green shapes to kinematic and the cone to dynamic. This is essentially because you're mostly going to be applying constraints to dynamic objects anyways. Once I've done the property reassignment, I'll set three single constraints on my cone, with each one targeting a different green shape. Notice that an object that is selected as a target object is highlighted in blue, with the current target selected object in green. Next, I'm going to select my first dynamic object, go ahead on the timeline, and change its position slightly. Notice that the rope will appear to remain in the original position. You don't need to worry about this, the constraint is still there. You could redraw the connection in the constraint panel to update it if you want. Okay, once I've done all my prop movements, I'll play back. You can see now that the cone is being drawn between all the moving objects around it. To further demonstrate, I'll choose my cylinder here and choose the prop puppet option. You can see that the other ropes remain firmly attached to the other target props. If one object has multiple constraints on it, you can select the constraints you want from the drop-down menu. Notice that the highlighting indicates which constraint you currently have selected. Okay, here you can see that I have a dynamic wooden panel here, as well as a pre-animated kinetic roller. What I'm going to do here is create a sort of rolling blind as an example of linear constraints. First, I want to apply a hinge constraint on my panel, and then select the roller as a target. What this will do is cause my panel to follow along with the rolling of the target. You'll notice that it's not moving though, as I haven't assigned it any limits yet. I'll assign a minimum value so it can essentially swing backwards and try playing again. You'll see that now it will rotate a bit, but at the wrong distance. To fix this, I need to select my panel and adjust its pivot point to the top instead of the middle. It's really as simple as just going up to the Edit Pivot section of my Modify panel and clicking the top indicator. Once I've done that, you'll see that it will go along with the rotation, but this time it will cut through my roller. Again, this one is easy to fix by simply toggling on the Collision Constrained Object setting. Now you'll see the proper playback. Now what I can do is use multiple duplicate to create some more panels below my first one. 
Just make sure they're aligned in the proper direction and with the proper distance. Okay, and now I've taken out the background, and you can see that I have all my panels aligned vertically, and they're each linked one to the other, just like in my previous example. Remember, you will need to manually do this, as using multiple duplicates will assign all constraint targets to the same object by default. Now you can see that when I play back, my blinds are lifted up. You can refine the physics settings to make it less bumpy if you want. In this next example, I'm going to be using multiple constraints to target a single prop. All of the props in this example are dynamic, so they'll fall naturally like you see here. What I want to do is select all of my legs in the content manager and then apply a spring constraint for them. Now when I play back, you'll see the body fall, but the legs will remain in place because I haven't set any limits to them. In addition, I also want all of the constraints to target the main body. So with all of the legs selected, I can just pick the body as my target in the constraint settings window. Now I'm going to zoom in a little here, so you can see exactly how I'm going to assign my rotation values. Notice the direction of the red x-axis on my gizmo. Basically, the spring rotation is going to follow this axis. So first, let's make sure that all of my legs are selected once again in the content manager, and set the rotation values for my spring constraints. I can just put the minimum value down to negative 180 first and play back to see the results. You'll see the bounce will be rather muted due to the low maximum spring rotation value. If I put that a bit higher and play back one more time, you'll see that my spider will in turn bounce higher. Again, you can adjust spring and damping levels as well to get the desired result. Okay, now let's do multiple constraints on a single prop targeting several different objects. Here I have this teddy bear, and what I'm doing is assigning several rope constraints to him and assigning the targets to the various balloons above. After I'm done, I'll just play back and you can see the balloons will simply fall. So how about if I want them to float? Well, here's a little trick you can use in the physics world settings. See how the z-force gravity is at negative 9.8? Well, we can reverse that on the positive side to have the opposite effect. Check out now when I play back. You'll see my bear float into the sky along with my balloons. What I want to do to avoid my bear floating out of the screen is to apply a spring constraint to it. This time though, I want to keep my target as world. I'll also want to make sure I set the values for my constraint. The spring action will be going upwards so what I want to do is make sure that I put some really minimal values for my z-axis. These values will allow the bear to go up slightly, but then return to a distance value of 1 eventually. Now here's the results. Again, you can further adjust spring and damping values to your liking. Now in this next example, I'll show you how you can get around issues regarding applying multiple different types of constraints to the same object. Okay, here I'm quickly applying a hinge constraint onto this handle here that will allow it to rotate around the pole it's attached to. I need to make sure that I set the pole as my target as well, and that all of my local axes are correctly positioned. You can see when I puppet Wanda's hand that the handle here will be able to rotate around the position in a straight line. But what if I want it to be able to slide along the pole as well? Well, to test it out, I'm going to try to apply a slider constraint to the same prop, and again set the pole as my target. Notice that when I do my direct puppet with Wanda this time, that the handle will be more constricted. This is a common problem when two separate constraints are applied to the same object. So what I'll do is remove the constraints from my handle and demonstrate another way to get this done. 
If you look closely, you can see that I've placed a little red square inside the pole. This is going to act as sort of an intermediary dummy for my constraints. You'll see what I mean in a moment. First of all, I'm going to apply a slider constraint to my square and set the pole as my target. This basically means that now the square will slide along the x-axis by itself if I wanted it to do so. But alas, I have bigger fish to fry, so I'll just enter in a sliding value there and let it be. What I want to do next is apply a hinge constraint now to my cube. This time, however, I want to target my handle. Doing this will essentially allow my handle to rotate within the limits around my pole, but also be able to slide down the same axis as was defined by the x direction in my slider constraint. Once I've done that and set my hinge values, everything's set. Now I'll just puppet Wanda's hand once again, and you can see the final results. There are a whole number of different ways you can combine multiple constraints together, so go experiment for yourself.